Fruits basket, fruits basket, fruits basket. Hit it out of the park with its second season in episode 11. Mostly focused on Kagura. I mean, don't get me wrong, our girl Toru, Kazuma had some great content, but that second half was something else. And with this review, I did something slightly different than what I usually do, because my usual format is... Well, I watch the episode and then I set up my equipment and I record my review. If the equipment's already set up because I already did a previous review in the day, I just record, obviously. And the reason I do it like that is so my thoughts are fresh in that, like, everything's pretty much on my mind because I do these unscripted, it's all off the top of my head, but also gives you my raw, unfiltered reaction without it being like, oh yeah, that was kind of cool and it kind of dampers down. But with this episode, especially the second half of this episode, I waited about an hour, give or take, a little less, I think maybe like 50 minutes. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's different because if you go to a movie theater, as an example, you see a big blockbuster hit. Everyone walks out of the theater like, oh my god, this was the greatest thing ever. Even if it wasn't, if it has like a really good ending or there was a really impactful moment pretty much right before you walk out of the theater, people are going to be hyping it up, thinking it's the greatest thing ever. Give it an hour or even the half of the way drive home you're not thinking of the same thing. So I wanted to just kind of simmer down a little bit before I got up and said what I was about to say right here. While I'm not going to say this is my favorite episode of Fruits Basket, period, Kagura's arc and what just happened might be my favorite character piece that we've seen in Fruits Basket to date. And the reason for that is because what we just witnessed with her love for Kyo and just her selfishness and how she basically just wanted someone to look down upon is something that I rarely see touched upon in anime, but when it's handled and handled correctly and done with grace, is some of the most memorable character pieces you're ever going to see. And honestly, it gave me a slight welcome to the NHK vibe with one of its characters, which I'm not going to name specifics as to avoid spoilers, but there's a female and male relationship that almost feels like what Fruits Basket did is healthier than, say, Welcome to the NHK, but still, it gave me just as much of an impact as that anime did. I loved what they did with Kagura in this episode, as if you were to ask me before episode 11 of season 2 to rank my favorite Zodiac member, she would have been near the bottom. And that's not me saying I hated her character, just someone has to be near the bottom and she would have been for me because even though her initial personality wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, she didn't really do all that much for me like some of the other characters did, especially characters like Shigure or, I mean, even Akito, right? There's just, obviously, it was my personal preference, but to see what they did and to reflect on every one of her actions up until this point, I am so glad she's a part of this cast of characters and she's risen to near top for me for what just happened. And it's not just because, like, the current arc and the current actions are really good, it's because her current arc and actions reflecting on everything that came before makes her so much more worthwhile as a character in Fruits Basket, and she already was worthwhile because you want to have a character like her that could shake up the potential romance between her and Kyo, or even another romance that he might blossom down the road. To have a character who is selfish, who is flawed, who is, at certain points, horrible, is something you don't see a lot because, especially in a show with as many pretty boys and girls like Fruits Basket has, you want them to be the waifus, you want them to be the husbandos, you want them to be the characters that people want to ship themselves with, if not other characters in the show, or maybe both. So, to have a character who is very flawed, who has done some things that are pretty damn bad, but to not shy away from that fact, and to have just Kyo so maturely handle the situation, barely talking, but that said it all, not that he was mad or ashamed, but he was trying to grow up and push forward to what he wants to do, to not waste his time with a girl he doesn't love, to say his true feelings, and so that both of them could have their chapter closed and they could start a new journey. And to have something so heartbreaking as, we know Kyo, we know how bad his life was, and we knew that he didn't have really any friends, and Kagura was pretty much the only one he ever played with. To have the situation be presented as, hey, she just stumbled across him. It's like, okay, yes, that pretty much makes sense. And you knew something's been building up. There's been the signs ever since, basically, honestly, season one. There's been signs that there was something underneath the hood. It was just a matter of what that was going to be. And to have it so, you know, Kyo, someone who had no friends, who was always just laughed at and ridiculed and just felt fear about himself not being able to watch tv for god's sake it's just like he was so sheltered and afraid and to have someone who 
held his hand and was able to be a friend to him, that meant a lot, and something that really stood out to me in this episode is Kyo's lines towards her about how he doesn't care what her reasons was for what she did, whether that's because she actually felt a true friendship or she was using him to make herself feel better. It doesn't change the fact that a lonely kid, alone and afraid, whether that was a real, genuine relationship or not, it gave him company and made his life a little better for a couple hours out of the day, and that is 100% true. And I don't know if everyone's going to agree with that line. Some people might watch and say, no, that doesn't make sense. That was a fake friendship at that point in time. Even if she eventually grew to love him, that was a horrible thing to do. And yes, from her side, it was a horrible thing to do. But it doesn't change the fact that he had nothing and he was able to smile for a little bit of his day. And I love how that's why he's not mad at that. Because one, his current life is actually pretty damn good outside of the family because he has someone that he actually loves and he actually does have friends and people like even Yuki even he doesn't want to admit it and things like that and even if the past was this horrible fake thing it did keep him alive to get to the happiness that he is trying to hold on to for as long as possible it's such a powerful and real line and I'm just thinking to myself how is Fruits Basket a fake creation the way these characters are responding despite being able to turn into animals is some of the most realistic writing I've seen in anime period. Not just from like this anime season or the past year. In general, this is some of the most raw and real shit I have seen. And I love it. It is so good. The fact that we have a girl who was just, she hated her life because she felt so cursed. It is understandable. We know how bad the Zodiac curse is. And the fact that she looked down upon someone who was worse off than her to make herself feel better, as much as we can judge and say we would never do that, we aren't cursed like them. Some of us might be able to handle it better than others, but at the same time, unless we're in their shoes, it's hard to say what any of us would do because we're human. And humans are not angels. We are not perfect. Every human makes mistakes. Some mistakes are inexcusable, and you can't go past them. I think things like willingly murdering someone and stuff like that, forcing yourself upon someone in a horrible way, I think those are inexcusable crimes, and you cannot come past that. But for me, someone who did shitty things and manipulated people, I think you can overcome that and be a better person, especially when a lot of that was when you were a child. And Ever since then, even though you were trying to basically purify your soul by saying, Hey, I was a pretty shitty person. I ran away in his darkest form. I want to see if I can potentially get him to love me. That will cleanse my soul. Even though you can argue that's also still very manipulative, she eventually did grow to love the boy. And you can tell even though he was always like basically wanting to punch her or she was punching him, you know, it was like the playful fighting. That was something that did help Kyo not die at the end of the day. It really, really did. Even though he never loved her the same way she loved him. At the end of the day, having something to take your mind off the fact that you are the cat and your family hates you and you're going to die locked in a cage, even if this girl annoys you, it takes your mind off of it. Imagine living in an abusive household where your parents beat the living shit out of you. Even if you had a younger sibling that annoyed the piss out of you, if it took your mind off it just for like 10 minutes out of the day, I'm pretty sure you're going to look back fondly at that one little thing that wasn't abusive and just kept your mind off of it. I'm pretty sure that's how Kyo's feeling. The entire buildup of them walking up and knowing that the confession was going to happen and him actually rejecting, and not only just rejecting, but also allowing for her to admit to her true feelings and him embracing, not saying, hey, I'm going to love you because you love me because that's some of the worst writing in anime period when anime goes the route of saying just because someone loves you you have to love them back because that's not how humans work just because a friend or someone you know or a random person says i love you i can't live without you you are not bound by them it has to be a mutual thing but the fact that he didn't shove her away because she's not a random person but she is someone who literally saved his life for a brief while actually a pretty decent while to allow him to get to a point where he can actually find someone he truly cares for himself and still look at her as a friend and somewhat of a family like his sister or something like that was a really nice moment and just like I was thinking to myself what did we do to deserve a story as strong as Fruits Basket and why did it take so goddamn long to get this complete adaptation I'm glad we waited for it but holy shit I can understand why the manga wanted this to be redone because you want this in all of its glory, handled and crafted with care, and goddamn are they hitting it out of the park. Kagura and Kyo and just what they did here was exceptional. 
that was an episode in itself. Then they bring up content with Rin just casually kind of bring it up almost like, hey, does she not want her around because she wants to handle the pain herself? Like, what's going on here? We don't know exactly. But hey, throw some Rin at us, why don't you? And I'm like, sure, why not? I mean, we know she's going to get a great arc because everyone gets a great arc in Fruits Basket. But then you almost get like eight to ten minutes worth of content or a little less than that where you get our boy Kazuma and Toru talking about breaking the curse. And there is lines in this dialogue that are just like you want to pause and just think about it and reflect. When Kazuma brought up the line about how he went to visit his grandfather's grave and how he brings up the fact that even though like he basically died caged in, for better or worse, he got to be free outside in his grave. And that is such a sad revelation because Though I don't think Fruits Basket is going to end with Kyo in a cage. I think the curse is going to be broken one way or another, but it's going to be a struggle to get there. I just feel like that's what they're building up to. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I'm feeling. It still is a sad thing to think about that that could be our boy. Someone who has so much future laying before him, but because the god of their clan is basically saying no, he'll be locked like a slave and that is just to see how sad that has to make our boy and just how he wants it for his son so bad that he can just be free and he sees this girl as a beacon of hope and just wishes he had the answers but is just holding on to the hope that she'll be the salvation for this group it's just so powerful especially because the dialogue back and forth it just it feels like such a revelation for Toru as if she finally has her eyes opened and she can see a path that though has a million boulders in front of her, at the very least she knows the end is down the road and she's going to find some way to shatter those boulders and one way or another she's going to save them all and you know damn well saving them all to her means everyone including the person responsible for all the torment, that being Akito. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Favorite moment and where the hell do you think is going to go after this amazing episode down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to share your support. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round to your sense. Next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.